Concerto. How's it going, everybody? Uh, I want to thank you all uh, for coming in, taking the time out of your day, taking your early morning, and coming and joining into the seminar. There's a ton of things that I really want to touch up on, and I really tried to make this uh, very interactive for all of us. So feel free to raise your hand, ask as many questions as possible, ask direct questions, funny questions, whatever. I wanted uh, Sro to be in this as well because uh, Sro has a live podcast. So just to give you guys a heads up, you are live right now, all free range. So other than that, uh, make sure you guys ask really cool questions. And if you have any direct questions about your own personal needs in health, fitness, and nutrition, you're more than welcome to ask me those direct questions outside as well. Other than that, you have three separate pieces of paper right in front of you, and we're going to go over each one of those. And uh, this is literally a hands-on guide for you to take home. This is a hands-on guide for you to take a step in the correct direction and where you want to go with your own personal health and wellness. Now, can anybody here tell me how many times you've been to a wrestling show and your promoter or booker goes ahead and buys uh, pizzas for everybody? <laughs> Raise your hand if you've had a promoter that has literally bought everybody pizza right before your match. Yep. Okay, and when you go into that match, I'm sure those pictures don't come out pretty, right? <laughs> no, 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 they don't because you get bloated, all right? so. Uh, Let's talk about why you get bloated. Let's talk about gluten and let's talk about gluten intolerance. So uh, growing in our body, gluten and uh, is essentially flour. Flour is not natural to our body and our body does not digest or metabolize flour. So when we're intaking nutrients just like that, we're actually going to be just storing them right away. Your body develops those and digests them and stores them directly as fat. So uh, there are a few things that I would encourage you to start uh, taking out of your day-to-day -day life. So that way it can improve your own personal health in the way you feel, the way you grow, and um, you know, sometimes people are uh, gluten intolerant as well. So that means that you have a uh, source of candida in your liver. Candida is a, a natural um, uh, fungus that grows inside of your liver. Now that fungus is good for us to help break down different minerals. It's not good for us when we're putting unnatural uh, things into our body, such as certain processed foods and whatnot, but we're going to touch on all that. So before we get into everything, let's go ahead and take a look at our nutrition guide. That is the one with the little plate on the corner. So feel free for you guys to um, go ahead and write. What I really want you guys to take a look at is uh, when, you're, when you're taking a look at your foods, go ahead and take a look at your list right there. That list is actually going to go ahead and show you your full daily nutrients that you need or according to a 2000 based calorie diet whether you either grow or you uh, grow in weight or you are calorie deficient so if you take a look at our little chart here um, there are so many things that you really want to pay attention when it comes to looking at your nutrition label. Your nutrition label is not always the most truthful thing out there. As you know, most products and uh, supplements or whatnot are not regulated by the FDA. Food that is served to you directly is not regulated by the FDA either. So what that means is that you're intaking whatever products that they are distributing to you. Why do you think that when you go to a restaurant and you see the nutrition menu, none of that nutrition is on the board. All that nutrition is in the little corner of the menu or it's probably not even up there. It's probably in the pamphlet that they want to send to you right there. So being aware of what you're intaking in your body is very crucial. Raw foods is what I would recommend. Um, and uh, speaking of raw foods, 
Uh, is anybody here on a diet of some sort? Yes, everybody's hand should be up because we're all on a diet of some sort, okay? So, um, raise your hand if your objective is to uh, put on a little bit of size and muscle. Yes, okay. Raise your hand if your objective is to cut down and trim some fat as well. Awesome, awesome. And how many of you guys are comfortable and want to stay neutral with your body? Excellent, excellent. So uh, general health and wellness is a, is a great practice as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at um, our menu that we built here. I want to uh, go over and talk about the types of proteins that you're intaking in your body as well. Um, how many people are vegetarian or vegan or don't eat meat or anything? Excellent. So most of those uh, proteins that you're getting from the phytochemicals inside of protein, uh, I'm sorry, inside of plant-based products are uh, the phytochemicals. Phytochemicals are nutrients that are found in foods that you cannot get from anything else, such as a supplement. If you're taking a supplement, just realize you're taking what is being given to you on the nutrition label, and you're not in taking the raw phytochemicals that are that can produce and give you different health benefits. Say an onion. An onion has certain acids that uh, help develop uh, anti-cancerous agents in your body as well. But if you're not eating the raw nutrient, if you're not eating the actual phytochemical, the actual onion, and you're just taking an onion powder or adding it to your food or anything like that, you're really not getting those essential nutrients that you need. So think of uh, supplementing all those supplements with your uh, raw nutrients as well. But I do still um, believe in supplementation also. So um, the great thing about that is animal, uh, animal protein. So he, who here loves beef? Me personally, I'm a beef person. Uh, you know, a lot of people are like, whatever, you know. I'm a beef person. Um, beef actually is excellent for you. If you're trying to put on size, I totally re uh, recommend that you have um, uh, high fatty beefs because those high fat, uh, fatty beefs, those are actually carrying nutrients such as creatines. Uh, creatines are very hard to, uh, hard to come across in any unnatural, uh, in any natural foods unless it is an uh, animal-based um, protein. So uh, those animal-based proteins, uh, such as uh, chicken is very lean, turkey is very lean, you are still going to be getting those uh, types of amino acids, but it's not as strong as, as if you were intaking beef. So that's why I highly recommend if you're trying to put on some size, take beef. Also, if you're trying to stay lean and, and put on size, take carnitine, which is a supplement that helps decrease the fat cells that are found in the beef so you're getting full benefits without any of uh, that extra fatties. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at our create our own menu here. I went ahead and uh, helped you guys. I want you guys to go ahead and take a look at the list of uh, foods that we have listed down there. There's um, proteins, carbs, uh, complex carbs, and fats. That's what we're gonna go over right now. So um, anybody, I want to hear uh, sources of protein. So shoot me sources of protein. Eggs, milk. Eggs, milk. Anyone, anyone? Steak. Cheese. Sources of protein. Tuna. Cheese. Cheese, tuna. Salmon. What kind of uh, protein? Uh, name me different types of protein. There's whey protein. There's casein protein. There's different types of protein. Egg protein, egg white protein. Okay, so all these different types of proteins uh, give you different benefits as well. So what I did for you is I want you to go ahead and make a little list of what kind of actual protein um, you would like to incorporate in your diet as well. There you are. So um, I made this, created this little menu for you guys. This is a step in meal prepping. So who here has done any meal prepping or uh, knows what meal prepping is? Marty, what is meal prepping? Uh, 
doing beer mills. I let you do on Sunday for the rest of the week so that you can eat right and you're not going to the fridge because you're hungry and getting something to snack in bed. Okay, cool, cool. So, um, what are some meals that you like to prep? I love chicken breasts and everything. <laughs> okay, chicken breast is a great thing. Uh, does anybody else meal prep? Has anyone else tried it, heard it, seen it on Facebook, Instagram? Awesome. What are some things that you like to that you like to incorporate into your meal prep? Um, I like to grab turkey, you know, serve it where I like. I can do it well. Awesome, awesome. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at our create your own menu right there. What I did was um, I'm asking you how many times a day do you feel it's necessary for you to eat? Well, if your objective is to stay on track and keep your uh, metabolic rate on a consistency, you want to make sure that we're eating every two to three hours, even every two to four hours. Now, let's explain that and diagnose it. Let's explain what exactly meal prepping is and how we've got to that point. Well, prepping your meals is all about efficiency. It's about your micronutrients. Micronutrients are what exactly your body needs for um, your daily nutrient value. Now, if you're trying to put on size, you may be trying to intake anywhere from six ounces to eight ounces in each category of carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Now, if you're intaking uh, anywhere from three to four ounces in each one of those meals, then you're going to be uh, de decreasing your calorie intake, which means that you're going to be losing weight. So weight loss is something very simple. It's very calories in versus calories out. Does that make sense? Sure. Yeah. Okay, so the calories that you're intaking in your body versus the calories that you're expending. So the calories that you're expending on your daily exercise, even if it's walking around or anything, oh, if you guys want to make some um, extra money, there's an app you can uh, download, it's called Sweatcoin. And that you can literally walk around all day and you'll be making you know a few dollars. So that's a great way, um, and if you have an iPhone, it pairs with your iPhone and it allows you to uh, track your steps and you make some extra money off of it. No effort, no sweat at all. Um, so another thing is when it comes to meal prepping, I want you guys to go ahead and take a look at our complex carbs. So who knows the difference between a carbohydrate and a complex carbohydrate? Awesome. So the difference between a carbohydrate and a complex carbohydrate Complex carbohydrates are actually slowly digestive in your body. Your body takes the time, uses each and every single nutrient as a form of energy. Rather than if you're taking a simple carbohydrate, something like sugars, or anything that uh, develops into sugar into your body, it's also stored in your glycogen tank which means that you're actually putting on fat. So if you're not using that energy immediately, say you're going into a wrestling match, you're feeling a little hypoglycemic, maybe a little bit nervous, maybe it would be smart to take some instant sugars. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I would never recommend this, but a drink of a soda right before you enter your match. The reason why those, those kinds of carbohydrates are essential for you is because your body's going to react to them automatically. It's going to immediately switch from using what is stored in your glycogen tank into what is being intaken into your body. So those nutrients are going to be automatically auto, uh, used. Now, since they're automatically used, it doesn't mean that they're efficient. Your body's not getting any uh, real energy out of it. It's just getting energy for now. So, complex carbohydrates, I went and listed a few. As far as uh, complex carbohydrates, we have like red potatoes, jasmine rice, oatmeal, Sweet potatoes, yams, those are your forms of complex carbs. <coughs> complex carbs are also um, vegetables as well. 
Now, I would uh, recommend as far as vegetables, uh, who can tell me their favorite vegetable? Asparagus. Asparagus. Peas. Peas. Just asparagus. Beets. Beets. Brussels sprouts are awesome. Okay. Broccoli. Bingo. So uh, these are all real raw nutrients. Now uh, these nutrients uh, benefit from broccoli and uh, Brussels sprouts. For men, I recommend broccoli and Brussels sprouts completely. Increases your uh, testosterone levels, Brussels sprouts and broccoli. Also, is the most uh, efficient form of protein intake as well. One cup of broccoli is 24 grams of protein. That's equivalent to a six ounce piece of chicken. So that is raw, so raw broccoli. If you're steaming your broccoli, if you're steaming your asparagus, uh, make sure you know that you're taking at least four to six grams of the nutrients that are provided out of that product. So what would be the best way to cook those? Uh, personally, I actually love to uh, boil my uh, uh, Brussels sprouts and then toss them onto a frying pan, get them nice and charred. Um, I know how to cook. So like, I, would, I would love for you guys to uh, get into the whole meal prepping thing. Also, you'll totally notice that um, not only would it be easier on your pocketbook, um, it'll make you mentally and physically feel a lot cleaner in general. Um, not only that, but um, what's most efficient is for not only wrestlers, but anyone in the industry. When we go to an event, we're there all day, you know? We don't have time to go and uh, go eat or whatever it is, uh, go have a sit down meal. We uh, go, we set up the ring, we um, you know, do our thing, we work on our matches, and time just gets away to us to the point where we need to wrestle. And you can't always have that pizza when your promoter brings it, right? So, to avoid that, we need to be able to ensure that we're meal prepping. And that's for industry people as well as wrestlers also. So, um, our next form is our fats. So, our fats we can add onto our menu as well. And um, the reason why I wanted to talk uh, about how many times a day you should be eating is remember, we are human beings. We're hunters and gatherers naturally. We are in a state of evolution all of the time. Now, the reason why that is is because we're hunters and gatherers. We forge and we go and we forge and we go. So, because of that, our body is naturally wanting to eat every three hours. It's looking to feed every three hours. That's the way nutrients are intaking in our body as well. So I know that there is a, um, a myth on um, uh, people do like uh, fasting, like a long-term fasting. Have you guys ever heard of like long-term fasting to lose weight? Uh, intermittent fasting, that's right. Um, what do you guys know about that? Tell us about intermittent fasting. Uh, you got like a window of uh, maximum time, usually like 16 hours, and then uh, you have eight hours uh, to eat, right? And you just do that on a day to day basis. Okay, so the theory on, um, on intermittent fasting is that you're going to uh, fast, put your body into a state of fast for um, up to like 12, some people even do it up to like 20 hours, and um, then right after that, they have this period where they gorge, and they just intake as many calories, up to like a thousand calories, and they think that by intaking those a thousand calories, they're gonna be burning them all throughout the entire day. That's not the way your body works. Your body is going to intake as many nutrients as it can handle at that moment, and then everything else is being stored. So yes, you are, um, yes, you are intaking all those, um, all those nutrients. Yes, they're being stored for energy later, but that energy later is stored in a fat cell. If you're eating consistently and you're keeping your metabolic rate up, such as if you were meal prepping, you would have all those meals ready on time, your body would be in a consistent state of growth. So that's why um, I just wanted to clear that little myth about uh, intermittent fasting if, if any of you guys do practice that as well. 
excuse me. So uh, go ahead and take your time if you guys want. Um, fill that bad boy out. This is going to be your little create your own menu for you guys to take home. I did want to um, say that, um, guys, tell me what is your favorite spice? What do you guys like to add into your chicken, your beef, whatever it is? Garlic salt. Okay. Garlic salt. What else? Fresh garlic. Fresh garlic. Anything else? Pepper. Pepper, yes. More, more. Cilantro. Cilantro is good, yeah. Adobo. Adobo, okay, cool, cool. All right. Spices and herbs are all zero calories, or not all zero calories, they're all zero carbs, okay? So you can literally go uh, check out any average spice. Um, you could check out McCormick or anything like that. All of those uh, spices, zero carbohydrates, you can literally add them into um, any of your foods increase your uh, range and perspective on meal prepping when you're adding different foods. One day you want to have, um, you have six pieces of chicken, you want to make two of those chicken, lemon pepper, two of those, uh, you know, a little spicy with some cayenne and, and uh, paprika, whatever, and then two more with, uh, you know, like a, um, a rosemary, whatever herb you want to do there. These are three different meals that, or these are six different meals that you could have that are going to taste completely different. So you're never going to get bored with your meal prep as long as you're ensuring to add those spices and get a little creative with your cooking as well. So let's move on to our uh, next slide here. Now our next slide is going to be all about our um, exercise. So how many times a day uh, does do we work out? How many times a day does everybody work out? Sometimes I have to work out two times a day, but that's not by choice, that's because it's my job. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So, uh, how many times do you guys think it's most efficient to work out a week? Sure. How many times you work out a week? Uh, five days a week. Okay. Um, I want uh, Stro to chime in on this a little bit. He's going to share his uh, story about his transformation and about how um, he's been doing his thing for the last year. Take it. Well, I've been really integrating a lot of uh, yoga. Uh, with obstacle training, uh, along with my daily workouts in the gym, you know, with different body parts per day, basically, and of course you give that um, uh, rest time in between those muscles rest and grow. Uh, along with uh, the yoga program, I'm on DDP yoga, by the way, which is excellent. I recommend it to anybody. It's great for the joints. Great. Great for the mind, spirit. I mean, it's just, uh, I can't say enough about it. Though. So it, it's really got me out so much. And with obstacle training, I, I have the fitness blocks. I do the running, I do the push ups, I do the ladder, right? I do some uh, bits and pieces I got from the P90X program I used to do. And uh, it's, it's done wonders for me. I've lost, uh, oh my gosh, uh, about 100 pounds <laughs> since I started. Uh, it's great, like sometimes I work out like once or twice a day, if, if not, it depends on the day. And of course with work and everything, you have to adjust to different times. And like everywhere I go, I, I get my yoga mat with me, which I have it here as well. So um, it's very convenient, it only takes like so many minutes out of your day, but uh, it's, it's so great in your joints and it gives your body that longevity that you need something. It's totally rejuvenated my lower back. Because you know, I, I've been in business for 30 years. And you know, we do, we do some great things, right? But after a while, we're only human at the end of the day, and the body takes its toll on you. So, uh, so we, we got to make the most of what we got with our bodies. So I, I can't stress enough how important stretching is to your workout program and, and livelihood in itself. Because I mean, it, mentally, it, it makes you more focused. Uh, you, you feel better physically. And it just makes so much an impact out of your day. So, I mean, I recommend the stretching as well as keeping your body fit in the gym. You know, like Ricky was saying, eating the right foods. And knowing what to eat the right times is also a uh, necessity. So it, it, it all ties in. So you got to have a good diet. you got to have a good program. I mean, you got to train your literally mind, body, and spirit together. It's all integrated. So. 
So Stro, on your journey, um, how many days a week do you usually work out? Uh, well, it, different body parts per day, you know, like say in the gym, you know, like, like Mondays, for example, Monday would be biceps. And uh, yoga would be like, uh, like three, at least three times uh, a week. You know, you get that stay, stays in between. You don't do yoga every single day, but you know, you get your rest time is just as important mm -hmm. as actually doing yoga. Rest and recovery is, is huge, and we're gonna have a touch on that as well, too. So, um, what is your favorite form of exercise? Oh, uh, gosh. Well, I, I like chest. I always try to change chest. chest, uh, and, everybody, body, chest you know, and, and legs, too, you know. Yes, uh, what is your favorite form of exercise? Shoot. I like wrestling. Wrestling. Yes. That's what I'm here for. A man. <laughs> what else? How do you guys choose to train um, other than wrestling? Boxing. Walking. I heard boxing. What else? Walking. Walking is excellent. Yeah. yeah anything to get the blood going, yeah. Absolutely. Well, I'm not a wrestler, and, and uh, I found swimming boring, but I discovered water aerobics. Uh, yes. Water aerobics is outstanding, especially if you have pains, injuries um, in your shoulders, um, any joint pain. Excellent. So um, what I go ahead, what I did in the center right there, I just listed a few different types of forms of exercise, and we're going to touch on each one of those. So um, choose your style of exercise. I put fitness is not just for anyone; it's for everyone because fitness is fun for everyone. <laughs> okay. Um, I said that on stage before, and I got a little shit for it. I was like, okay. <laughs> Fitness is not just for anyone, it's for everyone, because fitness is fun for everyone. <laughs> so, um, let's talk about CrossFit. Um, who here is a fan of CrossFit, has ever tried CrossFit, has ever done a type of CrossFit style workout? Okay, what is your uh, first impression on CrossFit? It's intense. <laughs> intense, okay. It's intense. Exhausting. Exhausting? Yes. yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, it really is. Okay, so uh, CrossFit is a combination. <laughs> Personally, um, as a personal trainer, uh, I see so many things that I'm, I'm against CrossFit as far as um, potential injuries and uh, joint pain and damages that you can uh, derive in long-term uh, practice of CrossFit. I don't think that it's uh, completely something that should be shunned. I think it's totally awesome as well. I think uh, that bringing CrossFit into the industry really just changed and innovated our industry as well. Now, us as performing wrestlers, this is a great exercise. We are literally picking people up and throwing them around. This exercise allows us to pick up a stabilized weight and throw it around in an efficient way as possible. Not only that, um, it is a high intensity drill. So let's also take a look at um, uh, high intensity interval training, which is the third one down. And that's exactly what uh, CrossFit is. It's circuit training. So circuit training is when you're um, actually going from uh, three different exercises. You could do fusion training when you're doing uh, two different exercises. Fusion is also called supersets. Um, I know uh, these two gentlemen were, were working out earlier uh, yesterday. I found them in the gym, ha, go figure. And um, they were doing some fusion training together. Super admirable, especially when you're in a tag team. You want to see a tag team, you want to see them eat, sleep, train, do everything as a tag team. So uh, props to those two gentlemen back there for doing that as well with their fusion training. Uh, let's take a look at uh, suspension training. TRX suspension training is, is essentially with uh, yellow suspension bands and the objective is for you to feel as if you're suspending in air and um, using a lot of core power and a lot of um, external reaches and movements to, um, to stabilize your core, get a full exhilarating workout. It's also just fun in general. Another form of training is uh, bodybuilding or competition style training. Uh, who here has ever dreamed of being on stage as a bodybuilder or anything like that? No? Cool. That's why I do it. 
So uh, bodybuilding competition style training, this is for more uh, superficial muscles. So um, wrestling is a very cosmetic business as well. So not only is it about your, uh, your core strength, your core values, but it's also about your appeal. How you look, why you look the way you do, and how you use the muscles that you're using. So bodybuilding is a very uh, superficial, uh, it's putting on superficial muscles to make you look overall better. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, Again, please go ahead and write down your favorite form of uh, exercise or how you would like to start training or a form of exercise that you would like to uh, participate in as well. Now let's talk about um, anaerobic and aerobic workouts. Does anybody know what an anaerobic workout is? Anaerobic workouts are anything that we can do to get active, to get physical, to get going. This is anywhere from walking to golfing to anything that increases your body's rate. Uh, anaerobic workout. Anaerobic workout are workouts such as weightlifting, where it's your body uh, heart rate is decreased, but you're giving the most maximal amount of energy. So this is also a form of powerlifting. How many powerlifting guys or girls are in here? Powerlifting is really awesome. If you guys are really trying to put on some strength, put on some size, I definitely recommend going on a powerlifting regimen as a base and then work on some superficial muscles after that. You'll look a lot better. So uh, that is the difference between aerobic and anaerobic workouts right there. On the side, I have uh, the training styles. Just go ahead and review that as, as you may. Apply that to your um, exercise that you're going to be creating for yourself. So take a look at that exercise plan. And with those examples of the uh, weights and the repetitions and the sets, W stands for weight, R stands for repetition, and S stands for set. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys two minutes to write out two exercises for yourself. And um, I want you guys to write out two exercises, your weights and your reps and your sets. And then uh, we are going to share some of them. So guys, go ahead and take two minutes and write a little exercise. That exercise could be anywhere from leg day, chest day, whatever. So go ahead, take your time, guys. Anything you'd like to add in? So as soon as you guys are finished, I want you guys to come and grab a few samples so we can talk about our next uh, page. So as soon as you're finished, come grab a sample of a branch chain amino acid and a sample of some hydrolyzed protein. Also, I have um, a few samples of some CBD-infused vitamins that I will discuss, be discussing. So if you guys have ever heard of CBD as a form of pain relief, I'll be discussing that as well. And I'd be more than happy to give you guys a sample of that also. So if you are ready and you're finished with your exercise, I'm inviting everybody to come on up and grab a sample. So let's grab one. So I had a few questions on uh, pain relief and whatnot. I am going to touch on that. You guys, I do have samples here. You're more than welcome to uh, sample anything you like. I love to give back to the wrestlers. I don't give back to everybody, but I do love to give back to the wrestlers. So um, this uh, salve is for you guys if you have uh, direct pain relief. 
maybe you hurt yourself in the battle royal or wrestling yesterday, you hurt your elbow, you're holding up a camera too long, your shoulder's killing you, whatever it is, this is cell infused CBD with vitamins for direct pain relief, help yourself. If you're feeling confident as well, you're welcome to take um, a sunflower seed base right here. And this, you can take it just right on your tongue like that. And uh, that will help give you some relief also. It's actually very sweet. So um, who here takes muscle supplements? Did you get a little water? Oh yeah, maybe a little bit. What kind of supplements do you take? Um, just the all the different model vitamins and I'm gonna give you a couple of MCT. This is CBD for pain relief. Sunflowers, um, 
Salmons, fish have a great fatty acids in them as well. And they're essentially help break down unnatural um, fats inside of our body. So that's what fatty acids do. Uh, next off we have uh, pre-workouts or uh, fat burners. Has anyone ever taken a pre-workout or a fat burner? Please tell me your favorite. What's your favorite? C4. C4. Anything else? Nitric oxide. Nitric oxide, love it. Brands, okay, cool. So uh, C4, nitric oxide, um, maybe you guys are taking um, beta alanine, taurine, arginine, um, uh, arginine, L-arginine, arginine AKG, any of those types of um, supplement or those vitamins, those are all natural supplements that are going to help increase your body's performance. You need to increase your body's uh, metabolic rate, you're gonna take a fat burner. That fat burner is going to increase uh, the rate of of, uh, calories that you're going to be burning a day. Sometimes you need to, you want to lose weight. It's very difficult to burn over 2,000 calories if you're intaking, that's if you're intaking only 2,000 calories into your diet as well. So um, that's why I would recommend um, pre-workouts or fat burners or anything like that. As wrestlers, I would not recommend taking um, pre-workouts such as like um, uh, arginine, citrulline, malate, um, uh, those uh, beta alanine, those um, supplements actually help tighten and strengthen the muscle. They actually fuel a nitric oxide as well. Um, they actually fuel the muscle with oxygen. Now, I've made a mistake of having a guy in a headlock and I'm just wrenching it and wrenching it and I'm only flexing my own bicep and it is cramping in the match and I am dying because the the nitrous oxide has my arm in such a strong pump that I'm just like, oh dude, I'm sorry bro, I gotta let you go. Whoo, shit, <laughs> you know? So um, I don't recommend taking like those kinds of supplements before a performance workout such as uh, pro wrestling. If you're in the gym, totally uh, want you guys to take those. It's only gonna amplify your exercise. So other than that, um, let's go ahead and take a look at the branched chain amino acids. That's what you guys are intaking right there. So um, you're taking a full 4 to 2 ratio of branched chain amino acids, and um, that's valine, thymine, leucine. So those three are what make up uh, amino acids, and those are the building blocks of your muscle fibers. So when we're exercising, we're actually ripping and we're tearing our muscle fibers apart, which is what we want. And then as we intake our nutrients, we're actually going to have the BCAAs rebuild those uh, muscle fibers back together. Next off, you can see that we have protein, protein right there. Protein synthesis takes place in mending those muscle cells together and rebuilding the scar tissue, allowing your muscle to become stronger and larger. Now, after that, you can see that there's glutamine right there. Glutamine is a thin jelly layer that lays right above your muscle to protect it, so that way you can have more efficiency. If you're taking more glutamine, you're strengthening that layer of jelly tissue, which means that you're getting an extra amount of endurance. You can perform, get a little more uh, out of your exercise. Maybe you're getting one or two extra reps, but those extra reps count in the strength and conditioning and the performance of your body. So uh, that, that triple step right there is very essential for uh, muscle building. Now after that, um, we want to talk about, um, the, let's talk about the CBD as a form of recovery. Now, if you are an athlete and you want to perform at your best, you gotta feel your best, right? So, if your body is fully recovered, then you will be able to have the best performance that you could possibly have. So, in that state, um, that is why I uh, found the gridiron Bionutrients and I went full into the product line because I'm such a believer in why we need relief as well as um, our daily source of vitamins to increase our capability and performance later. Sometimes we wrestle two or three times uh, a night. Sometimes we wrestle two times a day, we do double duty. The 
toll that that puts on our body is surmountable. So if uh, you need to relax just a little bit more that's, and recover a little bit more, that's what the CBD is for. Uh, now, I did want to touch on the branch-trained uh, triglycerides also. Branch-trained triglycerides are, um, who, who here has ever uh, thought of doing like a ketosis diet, keto diet? You guys know what that is, a keto diet? Okay, a ketosis diet is when you're stripping your diet from all of uh, the carbohydrates and all you're intaking is fats and proteins and your body is using those sources of fats as a source of energy instead of um, carbohydrates as a source of energy. Now, in order to keep your body into that state of ketosis, your body is going to be reducing fat cells tremendously because you're using um, omega fatty acids to break down the set of essential fat cells in your body, as well as the branch chain triglycerides are going to help the increase of a rate in which those, uh, uh, your metabolic rate decreases those fat cells and actually oxidizes your fat cell so that way it suffocates it from being able to reproduce again. So, if you're looking to lose weight, I totally uh, recommend a ketosis diet and I also recommend uh, looking up uh, a form of intake for branch chain triglycerides. Um, other than that, I uh, do have a supplement guide here for you guys uh, to write down. And this supplement guide is going to help co uh, correspond with your exercise training regimen. And your exercise training regimen helps correspond with your meal preparation regimen. So if you guys want to take um, another minute right here and go ahead and fill out your supplement guide, um, let's go ahead and do that. So. Um, when would you guys uh, take a daily multivitamin? In the morning, okay. Uh, morning's a great time to take a daily multivitamin because most of the, most vitamins are time released. That means that they're actually going to be um, developing in your body all day long. Um, other than that, uh, when should you take your uh, uh, fatty acids? Or fish oils? Who, or what do you say? What do you guys think? Morning. In the morning? I would recommend taking your, um, your omega fatty acids right before your second meal. The reason why I say right before your second meal is because uh, your first meal, your body is going to intake and absorb all those nutrients and utilize them. It's only proper timing that you want to be able to take those fatty acids after that, so that way you're continuously um, uh, intaking nutrients, so that way you're increasing your metabolic rate as well. Now, um, next off, uh, amino acids. When is it most beneficial to take amino acids? It's most beneficial to take amino acids during your workout. Now, why, why during your workout? It's because all of your receptors are open during your workout. You're literally intaking everything that you're possibly going, your heart rate is going, your, your, uh, your touch, your senses, that are all activated. That is when it's most uh, prone to take your, your amino acids. Um, now, protein as well, you would take protein after your workout. Um, now that protein, it depends on what kind of protein you're taking. If you're taking general whey protein, that could take up to 24 minutes to uh, develop in your body. And then an additional 45 minutes to digest. So here, I gave you guys a, uh, a sample of the hydrolyzed protein. Hydrolyzed protein is actually what I would recommend if you cannot take whey protein, if you're lactose intolerant. This is made with um, a water molecule as well, so that way it's easily digested into your body. Now, um, I did arrive, um, what, what muscles, or I'm sorry, what supplements can you incorporate to help relax your body? Again, I'm recommending the uh, CBD as well for you. That's gonna be the most beneficial for your relaxation on your nerves and your muscles. So, other than that, I'm done. Thank you guys so very much. Um, <laughs> so,
Uh, yeah, thank you guys, thank you Ricky for having me, uh, and thank you to HannibalTV.com for this TV footage. And uh, stay fit guys. Thank you guys, and uh, any questions? If you guys have any questions, the floor is open. Yes. So if you guys want to um, sample any more products, uh, ask me about anything else, you're welcome to. I'd love like to you answer any questions you guys have. Speaking in a jar, bring in this seminar. Yours truly, DanimalTV.com for covering it. Uh, be sure to hear the broadcast of the WC Retro Podcast this coming Wednesday. So, see you guys there.